On today's show, iPhone 12 to come with braided lightning cables, iPhone 12 mini to come with lower powered B14 chip, and why removing the charge brick from iPhone 12s is actually genius. This is the Apple Daily. I'm David for Living on iPad and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. If you like the latest Apple news, rumours and leaks, like this video, subscribe and ring my bell to join the notification squad and we'll be shouting out new members of the notification squad at the end of this video. iPhone 12 to come with braided lightning cables. For years, the iPhone charging cables, the lightning cables, have been the bane of people's lives where they fray at the ends, they come apart. Um, I've not had a huge amount of problems with the official ones, uh, although I've got a couple now where the casing itself is cracked around where it goes into the iPhone. However, it looks like Apple is up in their game on this year's iPhone charging cables. Now the braided outer looks like it might be made of the same material as the braided loops that they've just released for the Apple Watches, which suggests to me that they might also be made of that same recycled material. That would fit in nicely with a lot of what Apple's been talking about this year about their environmental credentials. And in fact, just yesterday, Apple won another award for their environmental leadership in helping their suppliers become more carbon neutral. The one thing that does slightly confuse me about this though is that there have been rumours for probably a couple of years that Apple is wanting to turn the iPhone portless and make everything onto wireless charging and why would they be upgrading their charging cables just a year before they're moving over to a wireless iPhone. That being said, I don't doubt the braided cable rumour, it just makes me doubt the portless future. B14 chip in iPhone mini. Now this is a bit of a weird rumour, actually it came out a lot earlier in the year but it's just kind of resurfaced. It's been picked up by a couple of different news channels. I had no idea about it until uh, Sal from our notification squad actually let me know about it in the comments while we were chatting through yesterday's video. The idea is essentially that the, the smallest iPhone, that iPhone 12 mini, the 5.4 inch version, may have a lower powered version of the A14 chip. Now this could be the same physical hardware but with cores disabled in the firmware. Um, it could just be that because it's such a small form factor, A, it doesn't need to drive as many pixels on the screen, so it doesn't need quite as much power. Maybe they're disabling a graphics core, or maybe it's the kind of reject silicon because all of the silicon that comes out from a fab is binned into the quality levels. For example, for Apple to have eight core graphics chips, they might put 10 onto the silicon and then all of the chips that have at least eight of them working can be binned as a working chip and they disable the individual cores that don't work. So in this case, what Apple might do is use the chips that have less functional processors, disable those so that they have the right core count that they need, that works, and use those processors for these lower end iPhones. That's not to say that this is going to be uh, an iPhone that feels in any way slower or less powerful, it just might mean that they don't need as much of that horsepower to drive the display in the normal way. Of course, this is all conjecture. We don't know until Apple steps on that stage. A B14 chip very much sounds like a second class citizen, so I, whether it's something that Apple would actually do and actually publicize even if they did, if it doesn't really affect performance, is another matter. And finally, why removing the charge brick from iPhone 12s is actually genius. There was huge outcry when it was reported that Apple would be removing these little charge bricks from their iPhones this year. I don't care. That's my first point is I don't care. However, I've been thinking this through and actually it's such a Tim Cook move and it makes a million percent sense. First of all, Apple has been driving on their environmental credentials this year. They've been talking about how they've removed it from the Apple Watch. So it's almost certain that it will happen with the iPhone and they won't be including a charging brick. The reason is actually more interesting, I think, than people are making out. There has been a lot of talk about it being a cost-saving step, and yes, it will obviously save costs. However, it's also gonna save costs in ways that you probably haven't thought of yet. So yes, we don't have to manufacture this or the ear pods that were going into the box, which would in a lot of cases just end up in e-waste. More importantly, this might not be what your charger looks like. Your charger, wherever you happen to be in the world, in India or the US or Australia or Europe, 
will look different to this. So this is the UK plug, and bear in mind that Apple has to manufacture all of these different types of charging blocks. Now, they're not gonna stop manufacturing them because they are gonna sell them individually. I believe it's 19 pounds here in the UK, so it's probably $19 in the US, and whatever the equivalent is where you are. Now, the more interesting part of this is it's gonna simplify manufacture hugely, because now instead of having individual SKUs for each country which has to have a different charger and having to ship the right ones to the right countries you're going to receive an iPhone that comes in a slim box which has got your charging cable inside and that's basically it. That box can be shipped anywhere in the world. It doesn't have to have the logistics to know which country this particular box is destined for at the point of manufacture. They're going to be exactly the same. There could be some differences in terms of cellular technology inside but as a general rule, it's certainly gonna simplify a lot. It's gonna reduce the number of different assembly styles that they need to do. We've also seen more evidence for this earlier this year because the Apple Watch is now, you will get one box which has your watch and your charger in it, and then a second box which has your strap in it, whereas they used to assemble them into a single unit in the past. That's the first thing. The second thing is actually transporting these things around the world. When you need to fly them out, you're gonna be able to get two to three times more iPhones into an aircraft into the same volume as you could before because the box is gonna be so much slimmer. It's gonna be cheaper to transport. It's gonna put less carbon into the atmosphere, all sorts. There's gonna be huge amounts of savings. Tim Cook is an absolute genius when it comes to logistics and production, things like that. So. Don't be surprised that this is what he's done. Onto my notification squad. If you subscribe, ring the bell and let me know in the comments that you did that. I will give you a shout out in the next video, just like Red Sun and Joe Duffield. They both did it uh, after yesterday's shows. And as a result, thank you very much, guys. Thank you for joining the notification squad. Hopefully you'll be seeing us at the premieres each day at 12 UTC so you can be a part of the conversation and you can bring stories to me just like Sal did about our second story today. Thanks so much and I will see you on the next show. See you later notification fam.